often how successful you are in a build has to do with how successfully you solve your challenges. Today on Woodworking with Wes, we have an office we're working on and it's got a challenge. Let's solve it. In our office that we're doing right now, we've got uh, a base cabinet that is desk height, 30 inches, but we've got a nine and a half foot ceiling. And we've got some bookcase uppers that are going to be very tall, 65 inches, five and a half foot tall uppers. These are bookcase uppers and they're going to be loaded with books and I'm sure they're gonna be very heavy. The problem we have, or the challenge that we have, is to create a situation where these bookcases have support. Let me show you on our plans how we started some of the things we eliminated as far as our uh, options and what we ended up with and then we're going to build one of them. Let's look at our plan. Here is our layout. This is the layout that I draw. There's, here's our base units right here and here's in red is our bookcase uppers and you can see how we have one in the corner, an L shape here and an L shape over here. But these bookcases, like I say, are 65 inches tall and 20 inches above the countertop. And so we have to figure out how to make the support that we need to be able to make these bookcases hold the weight that they'll hold and not come crashing down. Always an issue. What we started with, we started drawing our plans. And if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen me on my crude drawings. So let's start with my crude drawings. Originally, we were going to just build the box like we would do any typical cabinet box with an applied end panel and an applied filler. I drew this all out. This is my drawing. But I didn't like the way it was going to look. So I redrew it this way. We decided to make a full face frame and an applied panel with a built-in corbel that would go down to the countertop. Um, this allows us to have a much more furniture look and still gives us our support. We're going to go ahead and put together uh, an end panel, show you how we did the end panel, incorporated the corbel, and then we're going to put one of the cabinets together to give you an idea of how the finished look is. When we get all done, we're going to go to the office, install the cabinet, and show you what it all ended up looking like. The first thing we were going to do is assemble the end panel. Now it's a two panel end panel because it's so tall and uh, we're going to do it just table saw shaker style. Uh, I did a video on table saw shaker style doors. Uh, watch that video and you'll see how I laid it out and how I determined my styles and rails and, and grooves and everything like that. But we're going to go ahead and assemble that now uh, table saw shaker style and then that will incorporate our corbel at the end. You'll notice that one of my styles is longer than the other. This is my face style, this is my wall style, and the corbel is going to be down here at the end. And we'll show you how we do all that in just a minute. But let's go ahead and get started assembling the, the uh, end panel here. Uh, we're going to just use quarter inch end panel, quarter inch veneer end panels, style and rail set, and we'll go ahead and do that now. I have my center rail glued in. Whenever I do a two panel door, I always find my center where I'm going to do, and I pre-glue my center rail so that I can line everything up from there. And then I mark my styles so that everything lines up off of my center rail. And then when I clamp, I clamp my center rail first, like that, that's nice and tight. And then I just square everything up from there. Okay, there's our end panel. This is where our corbel is going to be down here and I'll show you how we're gonna glue that in in just a second. We're gonna glue a piece and we'll talk about that in just a second. But anyway, we're all glued up with this and then uh, 
We'll set that off to dry, then we'll come back and put the corbel piece in. Okay, we've taken our panel out of clamps now, and we're getting ready to glue in our corbel piece. This is the corbel piece that I made, and it glues in right here. Now, one of the reasons I made this separate was because my style, or these are my styles, this is my rail. My rail goes uh, horizontal, and if I were to make this horizontal all the way down, the face of my corbel would be end grain, and I didn't want that. And so I wanted to glue a separate piece in here for my corbel so that I had long grain facing out, because this is going to be an exposed edge when we get all done, and I didn't want to have end grain showing, so this is the way I did it. And we're going to go ahead and just glue and clamp this piece in right here. When it's dry, we're going to run it through sand. The things I'm going to do here is just make sure that the pieces are, are flush with one another. That makes it easier to sand out when we get all done. And so I, I'm just clamping it in there and flushing the pieces so that when we get all done, it's easier to sand out. There we go. Now we got to squeeze out. You always want a little squeeze out in your glue line there. Shows you have plenty of glue. We have plenty of glue. Anything, any gaps we will fill afterwards, that's not a problem either. Okay, that's all glued up. We'll let that dry. Got to dry at least an hour. Then we're going to run it through a sander, uh, a, a drum sander, and flatten this up. And then we're going to apply a back piece to this to double up the corbel. I'll show you how we do that when we get all sanded. But we'll get this dry and sanded next. Okay, we've run our end panel through the sander now, and we're going to apply a back side to the corbel. I've already cut this to size and sand it to have the same curve and we're just going to glue and nail this on just like this. We're going to make it flush with the end and flush with the bottom. Make sure it fits. That's exactly what we want. When we assemble our cabinet, our cabinet is going to sit on top of this little uh, piece right here. That will give us the support, the real support of a corbel is going to be right here. The cabinet goes here, this stands up, this is where it sits on the countertop. This is going to be a real support piece right here. And when we assemble, you'll see how that all fits in. Right now we're just going to glue and nail and clamp. We're going to use um, 18 gauge nails, inch and a quarter long so that it doesn't come through. And we're only going to use just three of them to hold it in place, our clamps and our glue are going to be the majority of our support or our fastening. So we're going to give it a nail right there and we're going to give it a nail right there and we're going to give it a nail in the back corner and then we're going to clamp this on. Okay. Now we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to sand out the back side of the corbel and put a route on it. We'll do that next. All right, we've run our round over now. We're going to go ahead and finish sand the inside of this. We sanded it at 80 grit. Now we're going to sand at 120. Then we'll go back, sand at 150. And this part of the sanding will be done. That will be very difficult to us, for us to sand as we assemble. So we're going to go ahead and get that done first. We're going to go ahead and sand this edge to 120 and then we'll do the final sand on it as we assemble. So let's go ahead and do that now. Here's our 120. Okay, and then 150. The sander that I use is just an air uh, random orbital sander. I like it with a Velcro disc because I can trade sandpapers very easily, like that. Okay, now we're going to assemble the cabinet and attach this panel, and then we're going to attach the face frame, and you can see how it will all look 
and then we'll sand that out and it'll be ready for the paint shop. But here's our end panel, here's our corbel, and we're going to go ahead and uh, assemble the cabinet now and you can see it all put together and see how this support piece works. We've got our uh, back piece glued on there now and nailed. We've actually started sanding on it. We'll con continue to sand here. And then I want to run a quarter inch round over edge on this side. Um, we'll do it on the outside when we assemble the cabinet. But on the inside here, we we'll, won't be able to get a router on here because the cabinet and the face frame will be here. So we'll continue to sand this edge. And I'll show you how we sand it to make sure that we've got a nice smooth uh, curve here with both of our pieces of wood glued together. Okay, we'll run our round over now. Alright, we are ready to assemble our cabinet now. I have pre-finished the inside of my bookcase to ex except for the final coat of lacquer. That's just going to aid us in the paint shop because I don't have to paint the inside all the way through. I went ahead and stained. This has a stain, a seal, and a glaze, and a top coat, two co top coats in order to be finished. We've done down to the last top coat, and we'll do that when we do the final part. But this helps us in the paint shop just not have to get inside the cabinet. So we'll go ahead and assemble this bookcase part and attach the end panel and then the face frame. And it just nails together with 18 gauge inch and a half nails and uh, inch and three quarter staples to hold it really good and secure. There's the bookcase box. One thing we're going to add to this is we're going to add a hanging cleat. Remember, we're really worried, or not worried, but we're really going to make sure that this is secure against the wall. So I made hanging cleats that will nail in the back here before the back nails on. This will give us some additional uh, strength for when we put the screw into the wall and uh, make sure that it's more secure. And we're gonna put a hanging cleat four inch hang cleat, top and bottom. We'll nail that in before we put the end panel on because all of this is gonna be covered. You're not gonna see any of this outer edge because it's all gonna be covered with the end panel or against the wall. The hanging cleat does one other thing it, it being this being a square piece when we nail it in here we pull our box square this helps hold our box square and then when we put our face frame on and our back those will also continue to hold it more square so we'll have a nice square cabinet when we get all done because everything that we've done up to this point helps us square things up now let's apply that end panel and I'll show you how we do that here's our end panel and this is a right hand side end panel so here's our finish height Here's our unfinished side that goes against the cabinet. Flip our, flip our bookcase over here so that it's right side up. And it's going to fit over on the other side. And actually, I'm going to turn this around so that you can see it better. Before we assemble, remember I talked about this little shelf that this additional piece creates being the support. You can see now as we put together how that fits tight underneath there and actually really gives some good support to the bookcase. You'll also notice that we're not quite flush with the face frame. That's because we're sitting on the bench. This actually becomes flush and then there's a quarter inch recess that allows for the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this panel on the bench and glue and then lay the bookcase on top of it and attach it with some nails. So it'll be glued and nailed from the inside of the cabinet. There won't be any nails on the outside of the finished panel. But we're going to do that now. Just lay it on its side and uh, attach the cabinet to the end panel. All right, let's spread the glue. Be very generous with the glue in here on our, pan on our styles and rails. That's the only part that's actually 
going to be touching the cabinet, so we're going to make sure that it has plenty. That's plenty of glue on there. Now we're going to just tip the cabinet into place. push it down tight against our brace. Nice and flush on this front edge. I'm just going to attach it with some nails. Front and back. And we're going to make sure we're flush all the way up and down. Okay, there's the bookcase attached to the end panel. I'm going to give it some extra nails across the face and across the back. Help secure the glue. And there's our end panel attached to our bookcase. The next thing we're going to do is attach the face frame. Here's the face frame we're going to attach. I have a decorative top rail with a little arch built into it. I've cut out my pieces. I've pocket screwed it and glued it together so that the face frame is attached. Now, this piece here is inch and three quarters wide. The reason it's inch and three quarters is three quarter inch end panel, three quarter inch inside bookcase panel, and a quarter inch overhang. On this side, we're two inches, quarter inch overhang, three inch inside panel for the bookcase, and a one inch filler to go against the wall to space it out. So I incorporated my filler, I incorporated my end panel, and I incorporated everything into the face frame so that when we get it all put together, I have one nice, smooth face furniture look. So we're going to attach the face frame now. Okay, I've got my glue on. Now I'll put my face frame on. The face frame will go flush with the panel that we've made and flush with this bottom corner. And that should make it flush with the bottom of the cabinet, and it is. So we'll put it right there, and then, like I say, we'll line everything up and face nail everything. Again, using inch and three quarter 18 gauge nails. We'll light up the bottom first. This will have a crown mold on. We'll see that when we do our final uh, whoa, when we do our final video at the job site. Oh, I'm gonna lose this. There we go. Okay, and then uh, we have a quarter of an inch overhang in here. We just want to keep that consistent all the way down, and we are right there. So again, we'll just. Okay, that's our bookcase put together. We've got to sand it out now, make sure everything's all sanded out nice. We're going to put a round over down that outside corner. And so um, that's the next step and that takes a little bit of time, but we'll sand that out. One of the things I want to point out um, is on the bottom side, whoop, stepping on the cord, on the bottom side of this, we have a recess here that is for a light balance. Let's get over here so we can see it. There'll be a light, uh, be a light uh, under cabinet lighting that will go in here. And uh, we're going to, after we uh, install, we're going to attach a finished panel here, a quarter inch finished panel. And then there'll be an under cabinet lighting effect on it that will shine down on the um, countertop for our book uh, of our desk. So we're going to go ahead and putty up and sand. All right, we're set up to do our 80 grit sanding first. Um, I moved my cabinet down to a sawhorse level so that we can sand easier and you can see it a little easier, but we're going to sand all around all the edges. Uh, again, like I say, 80 grit first, then 120, then we'll do our routing, then we'll finish it off with 150, and then we'll be ready for the paint shop. So we'll get started, take us a little while, but we'll get ourselves all sanded up 
and ready to go. Okay, I've puttied all my joints, my edges, my seam here, and I've puttied all my nail holes. I like to putty my seam all the way down even though it might be tight and I don't need to have it filled. I like to because when you sand the putty away, you know that you're flush on both surfaces. I always do that as just an indicator for when I'm sanding. But I also do it just in case there's a void, it's filled. But we'll go ahead now, we'll sand all of this out, starting off 150, or I mean starting off with 80 grit, ending up with 150, and, and then when we get done with our, we'll do 80, 120, and 150 after the 120, we'll run a long route all the way down this edge here, and down the face of the corbel. Remember we routed the back side, now we'll round this side, and our corbel, be in, corbel will be incorporated into our cabinet, and it will have a nice furniture look. We're also going to put a quarter inch round over edge, on the inside of our bookcase. That'll make a nice smooth entrance to our bookcase and our fa uh, the faces of our shelves will also have a quarter inch top and bottom route and an inch and a quarter face. So it's gonna have a real nice smooth finished look, very furniture looking for this office. Okay, we've completed our, one, our 80 grit and 120 sanding. We're getting ready to route. I wanted to point out, remember how we had puttied this line and I told you when the when the putty disappeared, we'd be flush. We're nice and flush with our sand now, and our putty line is gone. So that's how I like to do that, just because it makes it easy to keep track of my putty, uh, my sanding. When the putty is gone, the sanding is done. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and route now. When we get done with our routing, we'll do our final sand, and the final sand is done, we're ready for paint shop. Okay, all we need to do now is 150 sand and we're done. We're gonna, now that we're done routing, we're gonna go back and hand sand all our routes and break all our inside edges. By break them, I mean we're just gonna run a, a, a sandpaper piece across the edge to make cake off the sharp edge. And then we're gonna do our final 150 sand after the, the, as the final thing. And then like I say, it'll be ready for the paint shop. But we wanna sand our routes and have our routes all nice and smooth before we do the final sand. So we'll do that now. We now have our cabinet all sanded, 150. We've done the routing and we're ready for the paint shop. We have four cabinets like this to build that have a corbel and then we have two smaller bookcase pieces that complete the uh, bookcase uppers. But we have it and now you can see why we put a bookcase in on our upper cabinet and uh, that gives a lot of support. We'll screw it good and tight to the wall. Uh, it fits in the corner so we'll also attach it to the corner but it'll have this added support that'll go clear down to the countertop and it'll really give it some stability in the weight that it will be able to hold. So thank you for watching our video but we're not done yet because we're going to get this finished and do an install and show you. It's been a few days since our shop build. We're now here at the job site. We've run our cabinet to the paint shop. We've installed it, added shelves and crown mold, but you can see the finished product here. And then you see the fancy little corbel at the bottom and how it braces off of the countertop and adds the additional support for a very tall bookcase that could be loaded and very heavy during its use. Now, we've done this all through the, the office. We have bookcases on this corner. And there are the corbels on that side. Then we go over here. We have more bookcases, clear to the ceiling, nice crown mold. 
And there are our corbels at the bottom again, offering our support from the countertop. This has been a great build and a very unique challenge as we've had to compensate for a real tall bookcase and make sure that we had plenty of support for the weight that could be put for a wall hanging cabinet. I hope you've enjoyed our video on building a bookcase with a special unique support. These are the kinds of problems that you come up with or challenges I should say that you come up with all the time when you're working in the cabinet business. Don't forget that how successful your project is has a lot to do with how successfully you meet the challenges that each job possesses. Thanks again. Thanks for watching Woodworking with Wes. Please subscribe.